called sleepy, sleepy eye bo boogers. Mm -hmm. I see why dinosaurs always like. Yeah. <laughs> Get my eye boogers out of there. You look like a little red beetle. You look good. You look like a damn little gentleman. Why are you, are you licking your belly so much? It's all wet. I got an itchy spot. Yeah. Great. Okay. Did mama get it? Did mama get the spot? How nice of mama to get the spot. You probably just need some oatmeal today. <clears throat> yeah. Good morning. Welcome. The vibes in the pole cord are perfect. I know, right? It's it's crazy. It's crazy how quickly discord.gg slash Paul has become the greatest discord on discord. So quickly. I haven't even done like a proper launch. Just soft launched it here. And it's exploding. There's always people chilling in it. In five days. I can already tell that this is going to be, we might need to move our shit over into the shade because yeah. I can already tell. <clears throat> take this side, you take that side. You want to do all yeah, I'm we'll going to move no, these. No, 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 no. Yeah, we'll do it there. easy. Just be easy with it. Over here. Oh yeah, that's gonna be, you see that there? It's supposed to get rain tomorrow, I think though. Are we? Yeah. Well, we'll have to move it back. This is gonna be, this is gonna be way better. I can just tell. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can just tell by looking at you, the sun's not like, <laughs> I was starting to hear sizzling coming from the back of my neck, so. Yeah. No lawnmower today. Shh. Don't jinx it. So far, so good, but don't fucking jinx it. It's not the best. No NSFW channel. Yeah, this is, it's not a porn place. Go get your porn elsewhere. Yeah, it's not. This is not a jerk stroke Discord. It's a Discord that's like mostly based around the VC. You don't want to be moderating no mm -mm. short stacks. Nope. <laughs> the The best way to make sure that no goblin short stacks end up on your server is to not allow any kind of fucking porn. So, I don't know. <clears throat> My mod team might change their minds about that. What I basically told them was, if we do have an NSFW channel, it needs to be policed, like, super heavily. I don't know. I would I would just lay down the law and be like, no. Nope. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, if they want to fucking... But I, I already told them. I said, as soon as it becomes an issue... <laughs> but yeah, I don't think they're going to. They know my feelings on it. I really don't care if there is a, an NSFW text channel as long as it is camped by somebody who's making sure that people aren't using it to fucking break the law or post weird shit. But yeah, I mean, if it, it, that's one of the reasons why this works so well is that I have an idea I set the tone, I set the vibe, but my mod team clearly knows more about Discord than I do. And so I trust them. 
if they have a they have something that they want to do. I like posting my furry anime art. Well, don't you have any like lewds or whatever that you could do? Because I don't think there's any rules against that. Or is it all just like furries with their legs up so you can see in the tunnel? Yeah. There's other place. There's like a million places that people want to see that. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's just not a, like a, I don't know. <coughs> uh, I watched the trailer for Alien Romulus. I, I don't even know. We'll see. I, I don't get hyped for Alien movies anymore. I'm cautiously optimistic at best. We'll see. I wish Neil Blomkamp hadn't lost his fucking yeah. bit on it. I would have loved a Neil Blomkamp reboot of the Alien franchise. Not gonna happen, though. <laughs> he got so salty with the fucking chappy thing. <laughs> I can't say that I blame him. Yeah. The temp is in the 30s in my area. Is that high? Celsius or? Celsius or, well, hold on. Isn't it like the 30s? Celsius, Celsius is like, is like it's like 110 degrees, yeah. Oh no, it's 86. Freezing my balls off in Buffalo. How much is it? It's 86? Yeah. Uh, 30 that's not, Celsius. Yeah, that's not too bad. What'd Destiny is in the news again. Uh oh, what did he do? What did Destiny do now? What is he up to these days? I had to take a little Destiny break because I caught Destiny saying some shit that I just. There's a line, you know. When it comes to content creators and Destiny done said some shit that just made my eyes cross, so. I haven't watched any Destiny in a couple months. Wasn't even like a political opinion or whatever that I disagreed with. It was just him. He uploaded some video and the video was him giving advice to his young male fans about how to maintain a healthy relationship. And I was like, well... I'm out of here. <coughs> that dude is the last guy. The literal last dude on the planet that should be giving people relationship advice. That whole video should have been him going like, I don't know. I clearly don't know how to handle myself as an adult in a relationship. And so I'm not going to waste your time giving advice. If that had come out of his mouth, I'd have been like, fair. Let's keep watching Destiny, but I can't. I can't. When a dude, when a dude is so jacked in to the internet that he can't, he can't even see himself anymore. He's just this avatar that he's created in his head. Then you know they've gone off the res for me. His name was emotionally unavailable to his spouse, lol. That's, that's only the fucking beginning of it. Destiny ran a very messy, public, open relationship on his channel where he routinely would have chicks on the show that he either had already fucked behind the scenes or used his show as a vehicle to fuck. And then those people would blow up and accuse him of using them or this, that, or the other. And he'd have a big public fucking meltdown with a bunch of women on his stream. <clears throat> and then his wife would come in and yell at him and they'd have a fight on stream. 
yeah, but it was an open relationship. I mean, there's an open relationship, and then there's a relationship that never had a lid. An open relationship still has a lid that you put on the mason jar, right? Not his. Yeah, I think, like, poly and stuff has been stained by people that just want to cheat, but, like, pressure their partner into yeah. opening it. These one-sided poly relationships where it's, like, one partner doesn't really want to do it, but the other wants to, so the other partner acquiesces, and the other partner's running around like crazy, making this person feel like shit. So common. There has to be, like, a mutual arrangement, and by nature... It should not be playing out in public. You should yeah. not have your partner showing up at your place of business mm -hmm. and talking about how you rizzed them up and screwed them and then stopped mm -hmm. calling them and blah, 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 blah. Like, that's just stupid. That's bad business. It's oh, bad. I gotta get. Sorry. No, it's okay, baby. It's bad. Just It's just bad form in general. <laughs> Destiny parties like a rock star? Seems like it, yeah. Here's the, uh, all right guys, today we're gonna do an hour and 20 minute video while I play Factorio and I tell you how to maintain a healthy relationship. <laughs> oh wait, this one was right. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. My bad. to lose the weight. You're just eating better and it's just happening. I'm, I'm eating better and the weight is coming off. And I'm going to continue doing that and we'll see where it gets me. But I'm not like measuring my waist and hitting the scale three times a day. I haven't even weighed myself in over two months. Yeah. You're not even going to step on one for like another couple months yeah. when you go to the doctor. When I go to the doctor in a couple of months for my checkup, I will see how much I weigh. And I remember how much I weighed the last time I went to the doctor. Not worried about loose skin. No, more worried about having a heart attack. say the best approach to maintaining your weight is just to have whatever diet that you can maintain if you're yeah if you're cutting down to like just rice and chicken breasts then it's not, not sustainable gonna... yeah that's the thing is like i'm losing weight not because i'm necessarily like counting calories or, or cutting out every bad thing right, or whatever or cutting out a yeah it's cutting salt or cutting carbs or whatever i'm not doing any of that i'm just making it making healthier choices like when I eat and listening to like my stomach when it tells me hey you had enough what prompted you to take better care of your health um just feeling like shit for three years man I spent like three years where I feel like I didn't sleep a wink in about three years, I feel like I was eating nothing but high density, carb, fat, fast food type stuff and snacks that are horrible for you. And I was eating nothing but that. It wasn't like I was having that a couple times a week. I was eating nothing but that. I was getting McDonald's for lunch <clears throat> and then Chipotle for dinner or, you know, a fucking big An entire hamburger. bag of hot cheetos yeah yeah amelia would buy me those you know like 
I don't know what they party were. size or party whatever. Party size bags of hot Cheetos. And I'd go grab one and I'd just sit in front of my computer and get Cheeto fingers until the bag was empty. Is Chipotle even that bad? No, if you just are ordering like normal stuff. But if the every topping you add adds a couple hundred calories to a Chipotle burrito. And, yeah, so if you're doing sour cream and like guac and fucking right. sour cheese. cream, guac, and the fucking melty cheese, and then the scoop of regular cheese, and then the yeah. beans and the rice and like all that shit adds up. Double tortilla. Those tortillas are like 150 calories a pop. Yeah. Just the tortilla. Mm -hmm. So you're getting 300 calories. You know, not that I'm counting calories. I'm just saying, like, yeah, yeah. Chipotle is... A bowl is probably a better yeah. bit. A burrito bowl where you don't get a bunch of cheese and stuff is probably pretty lean and decent. But, you know. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 just making conscious decisions like that. Like in the mornings, I have one of my shakes, protein shake. I usually was not eating at all in the mornings, so this keeps me regulated until midday or whatever when I start to feel like I could eat a lunch. And then because you're eating something in the morning, you're not wanting like four hamburgers. And... Yeah, by the time lunch comes around, I'm not ready to eat the ass out of a fucking, you know dead wildebeest <laughs> I threw this shirt on this morning probably for the first time in six months because it was literally just like <laughs> sucked to my body and now it, that, that, like I actually have room in it it's weird Your shoulders almost feel like bony to me now <laughs> do they? yeah bony shoulders sorry I'll get some shoulder pads <laughs> no <laughs> it's not a bad thing I'm just saying like we lost a lot of weight just there <laughs> I still eat Chipotle like I'll still have a Chipotle it's just in the context of it not being like I'll have a Chipotle and then later that night Emilio will make like a you know a black bean hash or you know something I'm not eating like two big hamburgers and a giant thing of fries every day and no. not eating like two whole bags of tortilla chips when you get Chipotle anymore yeah, yeah. not eating like uh, pizza every fucking day or twice or three times a week you know, I still have those things. But you're having like two slices instead yeah. of six. Or I just stop eating when my stomach is like, that's enough. As soon as I get that like, ooh, I'm full. I'm like, okay. Yeah, like the past few times I've ordered something like you've like, I think like you'll have like a couple burritos left from Taco Bell or something. Because you just. Well, I haven't adjusted my order size to fit yeah. my new appetite yet. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I do order like a cup like some bean burritos or something from Taco Bell I'm ordering like I used to eat and then I'll get it and I'll have a bean, bean burrito and I'm like looking at the two more I ordered and I'm like I guess I don't need that so I'm still learning but drink water if you're hungry I mean, you you've been drinking a fuck drink, ton of water. I drink probably more water than you do. I'm yeah, willing like, to bet. Uh, those cups are what, like twenty ounces or some shit. Uh, they're for retarded. Yeah, they're like more than that. Probably they're probably like thirty ounce cups. Yeah. And I drink two of those every day. At least. At least, yeah. Oh, would you say you ever fully get over your first breakup? What do you mean by get over? Like, do you mean forget? Because, yeah, no, you, I mean, like, you don't forget anything. You don't forget a relationship. You just contextualize it. 
not care anymore. Mm. No. You know, like, uh, I care about my exes to the point where, like, I hope they're doing okay. I don't want them to be sad or alone or unhappy. I don't have any animosity for them in that way. So if that's what you mean by getting over it, then, you know, yeah, you do get over it. But, like, I think people don't give enough credit. Like, it's a grief. It's a loss. Yeah, it's like a death. Yeah, people don't know that. Like, are you... Do you get over, like, some family member dying? Like, <laughs> it's not exactly the same, but it's, like, years of your life that you invested into a person. Yeah. I only recently stopped having nightmares about my college ex who really, really deceived me and screwed me over in the end. In the end, huh? Ouch. Oh, okay. yeah. If you're having nightmares about it, the best thing to do is work through it. Because your head's bringing it up for a reason. Yeah. And it's okay to have, like, those thoughts pop back into your head, you know. Um, that doesn't mean you're not over it. It's it, There's a difference between being a normal human being who references their past and their mind and being a human being who's living back there and still obsessed about this, that, or the other. I had to accept that it wasn't entirely her fault. She met me before anxiety triggered my deep depression. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it takes two to tango always. That's another thing is like, <clears throat> I find that people that have a healthy ability to get over a breakup are not the people that you talk to that hate their exes. My fucking ex this, you know, that bitch, you know, it just comes up all the time. That's yeah. a person that's not over it. Yeah, that's a red flag. Like, yeah. They're always saying like, oh, my ex-girlfriend was crazy bitch or whatever then not. that stupid bitch used to do this and that stupid bitch used to do that it's like you're still hung up on that what are you doing with me you know and it's a different thing like talk about my exes with Amelia you know talk about things that happened talk about feelings that I'm having or like mental issues that come up but I'm not like Amelia's not like, hey, babe, what's going on today? I don't know, sitting here thinking about Ashley all day. You know, I just... You've never called her a stupid bitch to me. You've I've never... called any of your exes stupid bitches. I would never call anybody that. Not really, like, it, you know, like, I'll use it, like, when I'm angry at, like, a political person, but as far as somebody that I loved at some point, I'm not going to call them a stupid bitch. <laughs> It's just not true, honestly. Like, you know, we had our differences. All me and all my exes had our differences. But like I said, like, that's the perspective you need to kind of try and develop the two to tango perspective. And just like looking at your life now versus then and cataloging what's good about it that wouldn't have been good then, you know? Mm -hmm. Call me a stupid bitch, Paul. You're a stupid bitch, Nikki. There you go. Congratulations. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, you can ask anybody. I don't shit talk my exes. I don't, you know, I just don't. That's not a, that's not how you, that's not how you get over something and move past something. <laughs> By just living in anger and rage forever. All you need to know that listening to you is so healing. Thank you for that. Well, I'm glad you're getting a little something out of it, but. I'm not trying to be no healer. <laughs> Gotta give it to Amelia for not getting angry when Paul's exes come up. Well, why would she? Like, I know you're over it. It's not like... She's not in competition with my exes, and she knows it. There is no competition. There never was. I'm with her. I love her. She knows that. And you're always respectful about it. You say, you know, like, if you don't want me to bring it up right now, then we'll move on. Yeah, if there's something that I need to talk about or whatever that happened between me and an ex and she don't want to hear it, I always give her the option to not. I don't think she's ever told me, like, I can't really do this right now. She wants, you know, she loves me. She wants to hear what's going on and vice versa. It's the same thing with her. She brings up an ex. It's like. I know that doesn't mean she's sitting and pining away for an ex. It's, you know, you got a little bit of baggage you bring and you want to work through it. That's part of being in a relationship, right? Is being honest with one another about what you've been through and where you're going. Nothing wrong with that. 
Don't get angry or uh, feel put out or jealous if she brings up an ex. And I don't, I don't think, I would assume she doesn't feel the same way. Yeah. I, mean, I know you're not fucking texting them behind my back of like, oh, I miss you, here's my dick. <laughs> oh my God, bro. <laughs> like, that would be a thing. Like, even if I was a scumbag, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah. I'm just, I just ain't built that way. <laughs> I can't live in a lie and shame. I just have, like, my conscience is an 800-pound gorilla. It really is. Like, if I were cheating or, like, even just, like, stepping out a little bit, I'd be so... I would sit sit there just, like, I would feel like such a fucking scum. I would not be able to handle it. So I just, like, my whole life I've kept to, to that. I'm like, well, just don't be a scum then. And then you won't have to feel that way, you know? So. Still got accused of cheating anyways. Of course. <laughs> Paul, have fans asked you for nude pics? Yes. Mr. Naughty Priest, that was his whole jam. Yeah. For like the first couple of years or whatever, or longer. And I think he, you know, like obviously he's joking to a certain extent. But yeah, I've had fans reach out to me and, and uh, I've had to like have the appropriateness combo with fans before. And I hate to say it like this, but it's just true. It's usually like lady fans. Like there's been a couple of times where I've had to like, hey, you know, I know we chill in Discord or I know we you know, chill in my chats or whatever, but I can't you know what I mean? Like, you, you need to understand I'm married and all that. I mean, it doesn't happen often, but... I, I think the, the thing that made me realize that Mr. Naughty Priest has a genuine attraction is when he just, like, refused to give money to have you shave your beard off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Naughty, Naughty Priest <laughs> likes it. How many times we had to push someone away who was just, like, a regular person who had no friends and really needed one? Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, be it, I like, I'm very careful with who I call a friend. I like, I really like, and consider a friend. So, yeah, I don't know. Oh, so that's why you haven't shaved. No, but it's, that's, that's a funny observation, but no. I haven't shaved because I like the way I look at a beard. Mm -hmm. You just thought it'd be a fun little, like, carrot to dangle over people. Hey, if they wanted to come up with three grand that night, yeah. I'll shave it off and see what's up. But I ain't doing it for less than that. All the ladies want the ego. No, just some of them do. <laughs> I have a superpower when it comes to that sort of thing. I'm a good listener, and I have a good sense of humor. Those two, com that combination of those two things, is attractive to ladies. Yeah. And it particular. was before you got quote unquote semi famous. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, that's my that's my riz. Yeah. I've never been a dude that's gonna walk into the room and like ladies are gonna like stop breathing. Because they saw what a body I've got, you know, <laughs> like every relationship I've been in, every time, I'm, every little whatever I've ever done has come at the expense of my, you know, um, ability to talk, my ability to listen and, and my sense of humor. Like, that's it. Yeah. I think that's why you have like so little sympathy for incels. It's like you're not some alpha male or whatever and you still. <laughs> yeah, no. For sure. How do you get them to see that side of you? You talk to them like human beings without an agenda. That's important. If you go to a chick or a dude and behind every conversation attempt you have with them, there's a there's a, I really want to be with you in a relationship or I want to have sex with you or I want to date you or whatever. If you have like an agenda other than 
just talking to them and getting to know them, people sense that. And it comes off as desperation. And even if they don't, like, sense it forward in their brain, it's a subconscious realization that you're trying to get something out of them. And um, at that point, a person is probably just going to shut down. Like, I think a lot of men think that, like, oh, if I contribute X brownie points, I can cash them in. No, it's not that way. Yeah. (laughs) Women are not keeping, like, a tab of how many times you've been nice to them. Or help them out financially or whatever the fuck. That's not the way women work. It's not how anyone works. Like, Well, I mean, some people probably do. Yeah. I mean, there are users in this world for sure. But yeah. as a rule, that's not what it's about. No, I, I just mean like you can't cash in the piggy bank with most people. <laughs> right, yeah. I had to learn that the hard way. Uh, and that's just not even relationships, like romantic stuff. That's like friendships and family stuff. <clears throat> you think you're piggy banking all this goodwill and you really aren't. You know? There's no such thing as a goodwill pig- piggy bank. When the chips are down, you'll find out who has your back and who doesn't always. And it's not based on how many coins you put in. Mm-mm. <laughs> And you're going to be surprised, too. You always will be. But, yeah, no, you got to have, like, a certain amount of maturity when it comes to romantic relationships. Because if you don't, you just end up fucking up years of your life and wasting time. I listen to Case that Ra Sarah. Yeah. And you'll apply that to your life (laughs) do you give up your humor and talking ability for a muscular bod no (laughs) i just got done telling you it's the only thing i've got and you're asking me if i'd trade it for a a muscle bod that i would probably turn into a flab factory in a year no muscle bods require maintenance and shit I know myself well enough to know I ain't maintaining no fucking super shredded 12-pack muscle bod. It's dumb to pick up social cues. How did you get this social intelligence? Oh, I'm dumb to pick up social cues. How did you get... Yes, through living, yes. My childhood was marked by constant conversation with adults. And so I grew up or developed a sense of people's intentions and facial, uh, you know, features and body language and all that extra sensory stuff that happens when you're communicating at a very young age. And I started working it at a very young age, not like intentionally, but just because that was my life. I was raised around a bunch of really strong, really boisterous, opinionated, funny, loud working people. Baby talk is bad for kids. I've heard that, yeah. To a certain extent, I think it's okay. But yeah, if you're just doing nothing but baby talking a kid, it's a bad thing, yeah. yeah like you... Read them books that are, you know, age appropriate, <coughs> yeah. but don't, you know, like you're allowed to try a book that's not a picture book with them and see yeah. what they think. Yeah, why not? It's okay to baby talk them once in a while, but yeah. You don't, you don't want to make that how you always talk to them. My voice, it's funny. I have a little niece that's like a little baby, you know. Oh, I guess she's not as little anymore. She's now toddling around. But yeah. when I talk to her in my normal voice, she gives me this look like. <laughs> you know how she is yeah. with that look. She's intense. She gives me this look like. I'm like, don't cry. It was please. the second oldest that was like a little more wary of you. Oh, yeah. She was. <laughs> she was not a fan. Of the big hairy dude with the big gravelly <laughs> voice. Just want to keep him away. But then the one before her yeah. couldn't get enough of me. Yeah. Like in my lap, hands in my beard. Yeah. Still to this day, now even yeah. now that she's fucking 10 or whatever. Yeah. She's like the, the first one to come up to yeah. me. 
big hairy dude. I mean, you got to you got to put yourself in context. This is a, a baby. <laughs> not only that, but this is a baby that's raised in like an evangelical church environment. Yeah. They're just not dudes that are all hairy like me there. Ma, dad and, you know, all the church men are either clean shaven or very clean, you know, like clean cut. Clean cut. <laughs> And then Uncle Paul comes around like, hey, what's up, kid? <laughs> How many nieces do I have? I have six nieces. Yeah, you have more because you got other. Oh, well, yeah, nieces. six, seven, eight, nine. If I count all my stepsisters. Yeah. Ten. <laughs> Ten nieces. Between all my stepsisters. And one nephew. And one nephew. <laughs> one. Well, no, two. Two. Yeah, one of my stepsisters, the one you you haven't met, yeah, as a boy. <laughs> Paul, are you the weird or funny uncle? Both, especially for my nieces and nephews, because I'm not a church going person, and they are only around that their whole day. So I'm probably the only non church going person that they have regular interactions with. So that makes me a, uh, a novelty, I guess. So that would be the weird. And then I make them laugh. And so I'm funny, you know, so I'm probably the weird, funny uncle. I'm probably a little both. Yeah, like, I think what, like, the six or seven year old at the time was the first to ask you, like, why don't you have kids? Yeah. <laughs> tell them there is no God. When they get old enough, they ask me, I'll tell them. <laughs> Someone who grew up evangelical, you'll probably be a refuge for them as they get older. That's my fantasy, but I don't think it's going to happen. My fantasy is, is that like five years from now, you know, my eldest couple, my eldest niece or my nephew, I'll just get a phone call one day and it's going to be Uncle PJ. I can't talk to mom and dad about this. Can you help me? That's my fantasy in my head, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> we'll see. Would your mom accept you having an adopted kid? Yes. My mom would love an adopted kid. She'd love me to have any kind of kid. But we ain't fucking doing that. No. <laughs> no. But my mom's like a grandma's grandma. The more the merrier with her. She'd be she'd it'd be great. But just not my life. Uh, I'm well past the point in my life where I even would consider having a kid. Uh, are those allergies in Cali? You hear me sniffling like crazy. I need to go blow my fucking nose. You'd be a great dad. Eh, I don't know about that. I, I don't. I didn't have like a super great father role model. I mean, my dad's a good guy. I always put food on the table and stuff. But I was uniformly terrified of him as a child, and still a little bit to this day. I think. Yeah, and there's a big difference between being good with kids for, like, a visit for a few hours yeah. and being a parent. I'm good with kids in the sense that I'll listen to them and engage them at their level and um, play, play with them games, and play yeah. little games and listen to their little lives and stuff. I'm good with that, but I get pretty fed up with it about halfway through the day, you know? <laughs> like, it's a, I'm, I've had enough. Being the childless aunt or uncle is awesome because you can just microdose the kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get a few hours with the kids yeah. and then shoo, get out of my life. <laughs> kids are so freeing to be around. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. It can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. They got endless wells of energy and you don't, you know. A 
believe in determinism, so I guess it's how life is, yeah. That is how life is. Nothing you can really do about it other than change your circumstances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about adopting an older kid? Nope. That's even worse. Yeah, that's, that's, it's like doubly bad. <laughs> Not like that they, they don't deserve to be, but you gotta be a fucking, you gotta be prepared. You gotta something. want to be a parent. I do not want to be a parent. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Kids are cool, but not to be around 24-7. Takes a lot of work. Yeah. Can you make good garlic bread? Who can't? Just put the garlic and the butter on and you got garlic bread. Yeah, you smash up some garlic, spread out the butter, mix the garlic with the butter, spread it on there, throw it in the oven. How tough. You can get garlic butter that's already like mixed. You got a can. Oh, what is your go-to recipe? My mashed potato recipe, probably. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's the Rizzler recipe right there. And you the scramby eggs. Scramby eggs and mashed potatoes are my probably my two specialties, yeah. I make killer scramby eggs. You ain't getting no dry, crusty scramby eggs with Paul's Ego. Paul's Ego makes some nice scramby eggs. I guess burgers, too. I make a decent burger, yeah. I'm decent on a burger. Cheese or no? And what? I'm talking like mashed potatoes or like why not? I use cream cheese in my mashed potatoes. That's my secret ingredient. I use Philadelphia cream cheese, a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of heavy cream or half and half, whatever you got. Butter. Your potatoes peeled and boiled, salt and pepper to taste, a little garlic. <laughs> They're trying to trick you into a BK ref. Oh, I was saying. Okay, Fabe. TJ, actually a bad cook. No, he's not. No, okay, Fabe. TJ knows how to cook. <laughs> I just think TJ is a little undisciplined when it comes to cooking sometimes. That would probably be his flaw. I think TJ likes to eyeball when he maybe should measure sometimes. But I've eaten a lot of TJ stuff, and it's always good. So he's, got, he's, got the, he's got the touch. Just maybe not the practice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like if TJ like committed himself and started cooking a meal a day, or Just, even, like, four times a week or something. Yeah, I mean, but if he really committed himself and started saying, like, dinner's on me for the next six months, and I'm going to make dinner every goddamn night, we're going to try something different every night, by the end of that six months, TJ would be a badass cook. <laughs> that TJ makes greasy heaven delights. Yeah, TJ is, like, his cooking is typified by, if anything, a love and an acceptance of butter and fat and salt which you could say about any cook really mm -hmm. I mean those, those are the fundamentals of French cooking and you know TJ's got a very like Creole I would say style of cooking given where he grew up so Scotty ever cook yeah I've eaten some Scotty food before. I think he, he cooks a fair amount. I think he I cooks more than TJ. Yeah. But that's an assumption. Mm -hmm. I don't know that for a fact, but I think Scotty pro well, I don't I mean, know. Would, when you lived together, did he do that? Or <coughs> eh. Scotty didn't cook a whole lot when we lived together, but I think Scotty's probably also in a different situation when he's just at home yeah. with his family.
By the way, if you haven't done it yet and you've joined in the last few minutes, discord.gg forward slash Paul. That is my Discord. I hang out in there pretty often. Play games, talk shit. It's a voice chat kind of centric thing, but we have text channels. Come on over. Really easy to remember. <clears throat> I got that high-end custom link. Discord.gg slash Paul. Come check it out. <laughs> Diving in now. Yeah, go join. It has been a fun time over there the last few days. We had a little, like, birthday get-together yesterday for one of the people I've been talking to for a while. Had a big birthday bash, played some hell divers. Talked about AI art and argued about it yesterday with some people. <laughs> Got to get over my apprehensions related to Discord. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really chill environment, honestly. It's like enforced chill. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get people that are making fun of you. And if I'm in there especially, I make sure that people that are like more soft-spoken get a chance to speak. So that the big, boisterous, loud Rizzler people aren't constantly dominating everything and people get a word in edgewise. Discord.gg. Discord.gg forward slash Paul. Open invite. What changed your mind about Helldivers? Not too long ago, you are talking about how it's not for you. Uh, seeing it in action on an HDR capable OLED display with a modern computer. I've never played a game like Helldivers in my entire life. It's so fucking good. It's pure fun when you've got three other people and you're in voice chat and shit. You don't, yeah, you don't gotta force yourself. There are plenty of people that just come into uh, voice chat and just kinda chill. That's more Amelia's speed, like when she does come in. She talks, but not very often. She'll just kind of hang out and listen. and it's There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you can just mute, push to talk or whatever. And just... Yeah. Thank you for carrying me and Stevie that one time with the bugs. Hey, no problem. <coughs> Helldivers is just, like, goofy fun with, like, you know, it really shows off, like, the modern capabilities and shit of, you know, like, Unreal 5 and all that. Yeah, Helldivers is the most multiplayer fun I've had in a video game in probably like 15 years. Maybe longer, honestly. It's just like pure, unadulterated fun. When you've got a crew. I, wouldn't, I, would, I would never even play it single player. It's just so good. Too good. All aboard. I mean, I might consider it if there was a melee option, but it doesn't seem like it. No. <clears throat> <laughs> no, it's shooty only, unfortunately. It's guns and bombs. Yeah, like, I know... I can do guns and bombs in games, but I prefer a big stick if I can get it. Well, <clears throat> I understand. What is Helldivers based on? It's uh, kind of like a Starship Troopers kind of hyper-capitalist future where, you know, uh, everybody's a, a, a jingoistic hyper-American from Super Earth and we're fighting on multiple planets to try and secure the Empire or whatever. It's definitely like a... A kind of wry commentary on democratic politics and uh, nationalism and all of that. <laughs> the CEO specifically said one of his main inspiration, one of the main inspirations, is U.S. foreign policy. Yeah, you can tell. It's literally just like throw a bigger bomb at it. That's the game. It's like if it's big and giant and nasty, throw a throw a higher explosive round at it and watch it melt. The game. <laughs> you know, like it's pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie. 
and it's just like it's like uh polished that's the thing about it is like the screen like the the loading screens and stuff are all super good excited about the elden ring dlc i haven't even played elden ring so no yeah 500 kilogram high x explosive fucking orbital shot coming in everybody run You should do a whole DFF for movies that are essential to watch. That would be kind of good, actually. That's not a bad idea. Like, the Paul Zigo essential movie list. Here are the 20 movies that you cannot go to your grave without seeing if you care about movies. I could do that. It'd be fun. I'd, I'd be able to come up with that list, I think. And just pull some pictures from each one. No clips, though, at least with how things are right now. Might be able to do clips, but just on a Patreon one, maybe. Yeah. And just upload it to Patreon instead of YouTube. Yeah. Do a top 100 list. That's a little much. Top 100s are pretty lame, if you really think about it, because how diffused is, you know, the, the first 20 things on that list? Like, what is the 100th greatest movie of all time? It starts to get absurd. <laughs> but I'll do 10 or 20. Could you do the same thing, like, with, like, essential actors? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Because Nicolas Cage is definitely one. You, you, you can't go wrong without seeing a Nicolas Cage movie, even if it's a bad one. True. He's, he's fun. True. Yeah, you gotta see Nicolas Cage movies. Yeah, we recommend Dream Scenario. Dream Scenario. I don't want to spoil anything, but Dream Scenario. There is a joke that if you watch it, you'll understand why it tickled us. <laughs> yeah. Cool World is a must-see. Get out of here, Nikki. You troll. God, that movie's garbage. Dream Scenario is great. I, I really recommend it. It's on HBO Max. Check it out if you've got it. It's worth your time for sure. What was that one Nicolas Cage movie where we just stopped watching 10 minutes in because I guessed the plot? Was it Snake Eyes? Yeah, it might have been Snake Eyes. <laughs> yeah, I think You're... I threw on one and you were like, this isn't going to be that he's this, that, and the other thing and this guy betrays him, is it? And I was like, yeah. And I hit stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is going to be that. Amelia's good about that. Like she she's she hasn't seen a whole fuck ton of movies, but she's seen enough that she smells the trope coming. The weirdest one was uh we were watching Boardwalk Empire. I called something about one of the characters she's like how the fuck did you guess that? Yeah. That was crazy. I can't remember what it was you called. It was that he was a whipper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that he was, like, whipping himself like a flagellant. You're like, is he a whipper? I was like, what? No. I was like, oh. A whipper and a snapper. Uh, it's hot out here, so I'm going to end this. Discord.gg forward slash Paul. I'll be hanging out in there today if you want to come in and try out the server. Read the rules. Respect the vibe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.